Hello. Hello. So today, uh, much like many other days, uh, we're looking at masks. An awful one. Well, yeah, it's kind of front heavy. Uh, this is obviously a Avon FM4 uh, that has been graced by God with the touch of the EPU. Uh, um, the EPUs for these are basically adapted or copied, really, ESP2s. Well, no, technically. Yes and no, because the original design that this BPU is patterned off of was introduced for the M45CB mask sometime around 2001, although it had been in development well prior. The M7A1 developed by AudioPack, and this was by far the period the lightest weight voice projection unit on the market. And so other companies were quick to assess the design and basically make their own clones, and Avon was no exception. This is, this is enough of a clone that either one of these VPUs, if you take them off and ignore their bullshit adapters for their specific masks, you can slap them on a Millennium, uh, which is useful. Basically, all of these are interchangeable. If he wanted, he could put his VPU over there onto this mask using the large adapter, which we'll see in a second. And then you would have an M45 or a Millennium that would say Avon on it, and that would be a very cursed timeline. That's a sin. A very big sin. So, let's get back to this one. It's it's a it's a fairly standard oh, shit, I should use a coaster, holy really fuck. Um it's how you know you're getting old when you start worrying about rings on the table from the drink. Uh I'm more worried about rings on my finger. Fucker. Bitch. So there's a couple horrible things about this, but we're going to start by taking off the DPU. So much like the M45, it has an adapter housing. Although this one, while more robust, is a bit more, uh, let's say, prominent. Shit. Yeah, same thing. Uh, there's several major issues with it. Well, not issues, but let, let's look at the BPU first. It is it's it is what it is. Um, and I'll bring over the M7. It says Avon on the front, which is nice. It reminds you which mask it goes to. This one does not. Obviously, his being an M7A1 has the dummy cord on it. Um, both of them have foam pads on the back. Although the M7A1 has a thicker uh, blue-gray foam cushion to accommodate the M45. Yeah, this one is basically custom for the M45. If you were to take one of these and convert it to police standard for their millenniums and shit, you basically cut all the cool pieces off because you're a police officer and that stuff's too confusing for you. Pretty much, um, yes. This, I'm not going to do it because out of respect for my viewers, but if you turn these on and they're not on a mask, you get a shit ton of feedback and it starts fucking screaming. It's not good. The only other difference between the two models other than their physical shells and the cushioning on the back and the lack of a dummy cord, the M7A1 uh, and also the ESP2 for the Millenniums as well will have this um, secondary switch on the back so even if the unit is powered on, it will not be on when it is removed from the mask. That is obviously not present. On Which is unfortunate. Yeah, it is. Uh, but they were really trying their damnedest. Let's move on to the adapter itself. Uh, it's basically a big fuck off plastic cap that snaps on over the PSM. Right? The PSM is the, the Yes, cone. the speech yeah. cone, the primary yeah. speech yeah. module. Unfortunately, one of the most one of the worst fucking features is if you want to work the drinking lever, you have this fucking gear that you have to turn. And we'll show you what that looks like on the inside in a sec, but it's pretty sluggish on the uptake. Uh, it's not really great. And unless you're wearing the mask, you cannot tell where the drinking cube is in position. Other flaws that I've noticed with this housing adapter is that the drinking tube, well, on a normal PSM would be wrapped around the unit itself. This does much of the same, but with the exception that the two locking clips that hold this adapter housing on sort of affect the interface of the drinking tube and don't quite let it sit. They smash the fuck out of them. They smash the fuck out of each other, and they it may lead to some marks or permanent set on the tubing if left in that state for a while. It also makes it harder to put on. Uh, yes. And you could say, oh, well, that was meant for the CT-12 because no drinking tube. But that doesn't make any sense because, again, we have accommodations specifically for the drinking lever. So these were meant to be used together. So don't, Precisely. don't start shit on my comments. Anyway, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to move the filter so hopefully you can see a little bit better. I'll get that out of your I way. just started a Rube Goldberg machine that's going to inject me with morphine in 30 minutes. Um, All according to plan. So to remove it, you have these three little fucking notches, notch marks up here, and you fucking take it. Well, it just breaks this fucking VPU adapter on stream, even though it's a video, not a stream. There, and you squeeze, and it pops off. It's kind of sucks ass.
And you'll see what Still he was talking about. Still a hell of a lot easier than the uh, M7A1 adapter. Yeah, it's fucking awful. At least this one doesn't break. You have two clips, one on top, one on bottom. You have your nice, large, spongy area here for your fucking drinking tube lever to kind of get traction on it. And not much else. Uh, you have... Yeah. You got, you got anything else? Nah, I don't really have much else to say. I mean, it's it does the job it needs to, but it really is a case of... They thought whether or not they could do it whether versus whether or not they should do it. Because they're really... Uh, surely there must have been a more effective means of attaching a BPU to an FM12. They could have went and designed their own custom BPU, like much like they did with the M53. I would love to see an M53 BPU adapted to a conventional mount such as this. But uh, unfortunately that is not the case, so we have that big honking adapter to make it stick out. I mean, I feel like with the PSM, you can really make it so you remove the entire PSM, put a new one in that has a mic just forward of the XL valve proper, um, effectively eliminating what is effectively having a megaphone, or really, I guess, a, a cone, a speech cone going into a microphone through another piece of plastic. It's like there's several layers of bullshit your vocal noises I, have to go I, through to, to get out. What I could see them doing, really, just as an M53 VPU adapter, is they would have it mounted on the PSM, obviously, or they would have a custom mounting bracket, because you know you have the M53 VPU has that PSM, or not a PSM, that uh, mounting bracket on the back for the uh, valve cassette assembly. What they could do is just have a custom one that fits in replacement of the PSM, and then the lead comms cable goes off to the side clips onto a microphone on the side port. Yeah, you could have it hooked into a Klansman mic or something uh, and just use the front of the mask as an incidental location for it. But over, overall, this is kind of bulky. Um, they really, I, I get their design logic with it. They were trying to accommodate a very common VPU design at the period, and they were trying to allow, give some means of cross compatibility with other designs as well. But ultimately, it's just sort of, it's it's falling behind in a lot of aspects. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, these weren't used by uh, all that many people. The British made them. It didn't really, or the, the British didn't really adopt them. The only, I know the, the, only country, the Netherlands bought some. The Netherlands bought some, and then the only other country that I know of to use these in quantity was Brazilian Special Forces. So, uh, yeah, good, on, good one on that, guys. Uh, then, as always, I'm going to mandatorily show the... Uh, Acme Speak Easy right here, which is you drill a hole in the mask, you pop it in. Hyper lightweight. Uh, comes in a variety of colors and flavors. We're finding new ones every day. Aren't you going to feel retarded when you get your cord cut, you fucking doofus? No. Shit. You don't be fucked. What? Bluetooth Speak Easy. Oh, fuck off. Oh, that'd be fucking cool. I get I feel like that would be pretty easy to jam, all things considered. Like, you go, you go into that from a military aspect, anyone with a radio jammer could fuck that thing up instantly. That or you fuck it up, you don't filter your, your broadcast frequency at all, and you jam everything else. You, you, just, you, you just have your voice coming through everyone else's Bluetooth compatible comms. Yeah, and then you give them bad advice. It's basically a, a psyop kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not really a military strategist or anything, but I feel like screaming in your opponent's ear really loudly from 300 feet away would make them slightly less capable of shooting you. To some degree. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. This is a standard FM-12. Uh, we got the filter over there, our AMF-12 filter, right? Yep. Uh, it's an AMF-12. It's, it's neat. I... This is, I don't like this as much as the PS10, because frankly, the PS10 is the most aesthetic filter ever created. Um, Imagine if the Canadians cloned the PS10 instead of the AMF12 when they made the C7 canister. They, they, had a they really should have. I understand the larger, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's larger for probably more filtering capability or some shit like that, but... It's probably uh, no more capable than, like, a C2A1. I don't, I don't have the specs on hand, but they seem pretty equivalent. I try to stay out of that whole debate because I don't know enough about the chemistry. But I, I feel like I'm not a I, filter guy. I'm a base piece guy. So uh, thankfully, guy. thankfully, the community has not been graced by a dedicated filter expert yet. Except uh, Bot Stowe, but he focuses on the World War One. He does World War One's fine. I, mean, I if if you if you start getting up in my face and be like, "Hey, man, you need to specifically and only run these fucking Chinese ABEX seven five two nine three six H seven eight 
bullshit. Because it has, it's the only one that has this effective principle against this and this. I'll just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking block you. Okay. Uh, filters are like the least fun part of this hobby. Uh, at a certain point, you really just stop giving a shit unless you're actually using them for like industrial purposes, which I do on occasion. Um, but if you're using them for industrial purposes, unless you're self-employed, generally speaking, you will have qualified personnel to evaluate the hazards and provide them to you. So. Again, it's not something that private collectors really need to get into. Um, except, of course, for getting really cool tiny filters like the uh, the one you have there on your... your ah, yes. This uh, 3M particulate filter. Which I've had for several years, and now I no longer own. Um, that happened the other day. I wasn't entirely paying attention, but it's attached to his mask, so it's his now. I've stolen it. Yes. Anyway, now possession is nine-tenths of all. The other tenth is violence. So, uh, see you next time.